Okay. So this has uh, two microwave transformer power supplies in there. And it has a method of modulating the input power either from a control system or by moving this, these dials. Okay. It has a preheater here for the magnetron and then two switches to switch on the various high voltage components in there. It has a big safety cable here and at the back attached to this clock there's a little uh, BNC connector to a frequency modulator device here that chops on and off the power so it does high power pulses in there. The magnetron is very similar to what you saw earlier uh, except what we have in there is a waveguide made of this aluminium block here that's taken all the mag uh, uh, microwaves and pushing it forward and then you can see here we have two parts of an uh, aluminium billet that is milled such that we have a spherical cavity inside. So what this is doing is it's creating a lot of standing waves in there and then through this we have our crack pipe and this comes through here and hopefully we can put that in there and we want to sit that somewhere in the middle of the chamber and what that's doing is the microwaves can pass through and create up standing waves in there and also because this acts like a Helmholtz resonator you've also got sound here and in there I took some charcoal and carefully used a pestle and mortar here to mill it okay and then I used a fine sieve to grade it. Okay. What type of glass is the crack pipe? It's fused quartz. This is very, very difficult to work with. It was produced by a Hungarian man. I don't think he's even alive anymore. And we only have a certain number of units to test. This is why I've been holding off and doing this test for a very long time. <laughs> Not just the strange radiation. So, from the same charcoal that produce this working material and these sachets of control material okay so in theory these are all exactly the same age what we're going to do is put some of this material into a fresh reactor vial in there and then we are going to add a graphite pen sole rod this will span the waves. You can actually see one in this one. You can see it there. Ideally, that will span a few microwaves and allow for current to flow and cause the plasma to initiate. And then uh, hopefully that will pick up the carbon. You'll get some fluid dynamics going in there. And some of that carbon will be processed in coherent matter structures. That is the hypothesis. Yeah, so you might like to choose a particular piece, yes? So, Paul, if you would come ahead and choose a piece. So I'm going to load this up. I have a little uh, scoop here to load this up. What I like about this experiment is the reagents are really not toxic at all. <laughs> Unlike your one. Yeah. <laughs> Soapy fingers. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. So we want to load a fair chunk of this because you'll see that it does actually burn some of it up. It will make the tube dirty here. Now, everyone can see the careful use of uh, blue gloves. Uh, safety glasses and breathing apparatus. As with my experiment. As with Paul's experiment. And the lead vests. Yeah. Or, in our case, beeswax. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
We want a fair chunk in there, so the claimant for this uh, reactor, who didn't devise this particular experiment, but who claims that you need to run it ideally for about three months. Months? Minutes. <laughs> Tightening these counter opposite sides so it doesn't work. In every power, it will get very hot. So we have a fan which comes from an old Dell server <laughs> strapped on there. Now I'm going to ask you to go down.